Well, from your sweat towel to exercise equipment, frigid and hot temperatures, there's some sneaky ways your workout could be messing with your skin. Mm, well, board certified dermatologist Dr. Dalva Bonasali is here to discuss what you need to do to keep your skin healthy in any type of workout out there. Good to know as we're staring down uh, 95 degrees today. <laughs> Thanks for being with us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Well, so first of all, you say it's just it's not enough just to remember to wear sunscreen. It's also really important to use the right amount and then to continue to reapply. So what are the rules? So first, let's be honest. Almost everybody under applies their sunscreen. It's it, myself probably included. We try our best, but inevitably um, the vast majority of human beings just don't. And so what I tell people is this for the full body you need about a shot glass amount. Um, that's about two to three tablespoons. Um, for the face, head, and neck, um, I usually tell people the two-finger rule. That's two little strips of sunscreen there for the face, neck, and make sure you reapply every two hours. That also trips people up. And a lot of times we see people who come in with sunburns after saying they apply their sunscreen, but mm -hmm. they almost inevitably never reapply. So that's very, very important. I was just thinking, oh, man, I've been missing my neck. I'm glad you pointed that out. It All makes right. a I Listen, I promise you, it makes a difference. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of workouts, how can a workout mess with your scalp, and what should we be doing? So a few different ways. One is, uh, I think in the last week, I've had two people come in with scalp sunburns, uh, especially the middle part or even frontal area of the scalp. So it's very common, um, especially in this kind of weather. And then secondly, I mean, this is a bit more um, for long term, but when people wear very tight braids or tight hairstyles, um, especially over time, you get something called traction alopecia and people can actually start thinning uh, hair in the frontal part of their scalp or wherever the tension is on their hair. So I always tell people wear loose fitting caps. Um, it doesn't have to be so loose that it's moving around, but just not so tight that you, your hair can't breathe. Yeah, things you're not really thinking about because you're like, I just got to get to the, you're like trying to convince yourself to get to the gym and get outside <laughs> and work out. And you're not thinking about all this. So let's talk about how working out actually impacts skin conditions, acne, or how you can prevent any flare-ups or breakouts because I know that's pretty common. Sure. So acne in general, if you have acne-prone skin, you tend to have more oily skin. You add the sweat, um, it really just clogs the pores and a lot of times acne becomes a lot worse. There's also something, I used to call it the soul cycle rash or Peloton rash. A lot of times when people do classes. They tend to go to brunch, hang out with friends afterwards, they forget to shower for a bit, and they start getting breakouts in their body. Yeah. And it's actually not true acne. Um, sometimes people call it fungal acne, but it's actually caused by a yeast, um, and it mimics acne. And we actually use products like Selsun Blue or over-the-counter Nizorol uh, to treat it, but it's very, very common. And, and often it's um, those patients who come in with, whether it's on their legs, bottom, back, um, just this weird kind of red rash that hasn't been going away. So something that can attribute you can attribute that to is probably wearing your workout clothes a little bit too long. And uh, exactly. so how long or when should we be washing our workout clothes and how often? I mean, honestly, every day if you can. So it's one of the big things I tell people, good hygiene goes a long way. And I know it sounds so simple, but you know, we sometimes forget. We might throw on a hat again that we wore the day before, a couple of days before. That makes a difference. You know, we have something called pomade acne that can have acne around your forehead um, from your hair products that, that uh, the oils touch your scalp and, and, and they touch your eyebrows and the forehead area and that just blocks pores and causes the acne breakouts. Oh my so gosh, I'm to trying think to think about when I wore my, when I washed my hat last. I don't even know. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't even want to admit that on television. All right, uh, what about <laughs> swimming in the pool? Does that have any effect, and is there a way swimmers can also protect themselves? Sure. So right now, it's a great time to be swimming. I love uh, jumping in the pool at least two to three times a week myself, but there's a lot of chemicals in there that can dry out your skin. So one of my favorite hacks is just putting your moisturizer in your gym bag. The second you get out of the pool, do a quick rinse and apply your moisturizer, protect your skin barrier. Um, again, a lot of times people see that the acne gets better with full use, but you can also get a lot more um, serious issues like infections and things like that over time, especially if that skin barrier is compromised. All right. Well, Dr. Bonasali, thank you so much for joining us and shedding light on this very important topic. <laughs> Got a lot to think thank about now. <laughs> yeah. Let's be careful. <laughs> we will see you soon, I'm sure.